Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a courtroom in Michigan with a more Savtard who thinks he knows the law better than everybody else in the courtroom. But all he does is blunder his way through case laws that he has absolutely no concept of and uh, presumes to call the out the uh, attorneys and judge as well, criminals, when he is indeed in the middle of a criminal proceeding himself for uh, gun charges. And despite his attempt to uh, uh, muddy the waters, it doesn't sway the judge or anybody else in the courtroom for change of venue or anything like that. But it just makes him look like a complete ignoramus. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show, because this is going to be a long ride a long and funny ride well now you're not exactly uh, making good first impressions with how you are dressed here in court your appearance is disrespectful to the court and a complete disaster at this point, just like the rest of this video will be with your case. I mean, fe wearing a fez, jeans, and a t-shirt to court. Not exactly the best idea you've ever had. I'm sure you've had, and I'm sure you have had many bad ideas leading up to this point, which is probably why you're here. <laughs> All right, we're on the record. This is Stephen Sid, Michigan versus Carnell Michael McCreary. Two, three, five, six, four, eight, five. Mr. McCreary is charged with count one assault, assist murder, count two assault, to be written by the count less than murder or by strangulation. Count three weapons, firearms, possession by felon. Count four weapons, ammunition, possession by felon. Count five, assault, the dangerous weapon, one assault. Count six, seven, eight, nine, ten, weapons selling firearms with official offender fourth and set for a year today. Appearances. Okay, so it's not traffic related charges this time, it's possession of firearms by a convicted felon. Which uh be you being a more sovereign citizen, I can guarantee you, I can predict your defense saying that since you are a more, you are not uh, in their jurisdiction, so therefore they have to let you go. It, I'm sure that's what you're going to say. So let's just continue on and see exactly what he has to say. Edwin Sawaki, P548, and Larry on behalf of Evil P37104. Starting with Michael McCreary Gill on lower case, natural person, not a person. Starting out of the gate with I am not a corporation argument. Dude, we're not corporations, we're just people. I mean, if you can't figure out that the individual person is not a corporation, then there's something deeply wrong with you. Um, if I may uh, ask this court a question, or address the court. And your, uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Earl Washington, Naval Independent Service, P31383, as the standby attorney. What's your question? Uh, uh, first, I would like to uh, object, no disrespect to uh, S.Y. here, but he does not represent me. I don't uh, know that. Okay. Yes, but the prosecution. Your objection has been noted on the record. And the you prosecution and them are. Uh, you have a question? Yes. What's the question? I didn't know that the court would allow the prosecution to uh, commit felonies in violation of state okay. and federal That's law. That's not a question. Again, right out of the gate, going pro se and uh, accusing the prosecution of committing crimes. Not a very good start. So it should be fun watching this lead paint drinking more Sovtard go down in flames. Okay, so we have a question. Also, the, right um, the question He's is... He's not going to talk a bit down. Right. So we have Attorney Washington at standby counsel. He does not represent you, but in the event that you need help, he's there to help you. This is your request that we're on here today, so you can begin with your request to the court. I don't... Uh, 
He's not representing me. We've already established yes. that. So you can begin. Yes. I have your documentation um, here. So you can start. I haven't. I haven't had anything from the prosecutor's office. You gave the prosecution two orders to give me discovery under People versus Daisy. The uh, 225 Michigan Appeals 592 violation of a discovery order is grounds for dismissal. Also, I would like that the court, as well as the people, provide their bond numbers, their licenses to practice law. Uh, yes, and their oath of office. Because right now, at this point, I'm being violated. I would like to also have Kim Worthy here, the chief prosecutor, because she has committed crimes past and present. I would like uh, a change of venue because DPD has been continuously retaliating over the years. It's well documented. People have been lying, making false complaints. They're using known perjurers. I've made reports with Detroit police, and I'm not being. Hold up, hold up, hold up. If you're making all these allegations and you say it's well documented, you should provide the documentation to back up what you're saying. You should submit it into evidence or submit it to the court. Just go through the due process. And until then, if you don't have the evidence and you're just pulling this out of your ass, just sit down and shut up because you're only making yourself look like a complete moron. But hey, please carry on. It's entertaining. Given the same rights as any other citizen, There's a person is being called in and they're saying, well, hey, Mr. McCurry did this and did that. They come to my house. They bang on my door. They're they're impeding upon my uh, freedoms, my sovereignty. They're a corporation. Corporations cannot act upon natural persons. Now the case. What did I say? That this corporation BS would eventually pop up. And here you go. I mean, it's a nonsensical argument made up by a bunch of uh, gurus for morons who can't figure out the law, such as this guy. Of Coins versus Virginia, 19 U.S. page 264, says that it started in D.C. They incorporated the inhabitants of D.C. and the states, other states. I am not a corporation. Uh, I, as I stated numerously in the uh, beginning of this case, Abinicio, I reserve my rights not to be compelled to perform under any contract or commercial agreement. I am a, a Moorish national sovereign. Um, this court, as well as the people, have violated the Moroccan American Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 28 June of 1786. Yeah, I doubt you even read the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, considering it has to do with uh, maritime laws and everything of that nature. So, yeah, uh, try again. Now, this quasi-contract that I presented to the courts, per the Michigan Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, this matter has already been litigated. And this court, as well as the people, are in default. And again, they refused to give me their bond numbers, their names, and things of that nature so that I may properly file a lien in the federal court, as well as I'm preparing a 42 U.S.C. 1983. Your civil rights haven't been violated. You're just a freaking moron. Case. Again, uh, the state has no duty to protect private citizens from private citizens under uh, the Sandy versus Winnebago Department of Social Services 489. I really wish you uh, more softars would just uh, read the actual cases instead of quoting them from other gurus, because if you actually do that, you might be educated on the subject, and this is one of those cases. Now, given that this guy is not exactly reliable information, I am not going to go through every single one of the cases that he quotes, because I've looked for, through a few of them already, and they're all garbage. He hasn't quoted them right. And I still got a lot more of these to go, so I'm not going to go through them all. But needless to say, he does provide a lot of inaccurate information. U.S. 189, 1989, if you go all the way back to the civil rights cases, the 13th and the 14th Amendments were created to protect African Americans from discrimination by city, county, and state and federal governments. And it also says in this case as well that they have no duty to protect private citizens from private citizens. So to compel performance of these corporate statutes, which it speaks about in Coins versus Virginia, again, 19 U.S., page 264, they created statutes to corporately punish the inhabitants 
of the city of Washington and the District of Columbia, and it went down into the other uh, federal territories as well as the cities, counties, and the state governments. You remind me a lot of uh, Kent Hovind. He spews out a lot of BS, which can be easily proven false by anybody who's ever done research on the topics he talks about. It's just real irritatingly stupid. And they're committing fraud against the people. These constitute, I mean, excuse me, these statutes that they have me charged with are unconstitutional and acts per, I mean, even though you're in default, I'm giving the state another chance, but this right here is already locked in. They're in default because the law says where they have a legal or moral duty to respond, their silence is their acquiescence, their tacit agreement. So they're in default, Your Honor. And I would ask that the court subpoena Kim Worthy here so that we may put her on the stand to uh, answer for her subordinates' criminal behavior as well as her criminal behavior. I have documents here where it's clear that they. Uh, can I sit down for a minute? My back is kind of bothering me. That's my day to shake. First of all, this is not their trial. This is your hearings. This has nothing to do with them. It's irrelevant to the topic at hand. Second of all, uh, this is why you need a lawyer, because if you had these uh, grievances already, the lawyer would know how to file these grievances and perhaps get something done. But seeing as how you're not a lawyer, this is kind of irrelevant at this point. This is just one of those... Uh, try to extend the trial as long as you can methods so maybe they'll throw the case out or something like that i mean you're just playing games with the court right now but uh i would like the uh can work to be brought here so that she can be questioned about the change of venue the allegations which are factual what he said me to prison for 15 years and eight months with no crime at all does kirsten frank kelly was in wayne county she issued an order against me that was known and void. I was railroaded, sent to prison, did 15 years and eight months where I lost my mother, uh, family, time away from my daughter, who's now 24 years old. She's a mother. I'm a grandfather. I've been productive in the community since I've been home. They're trying to make me look like I'm a demon. But the paperwork shows the opposite. And I would like all of these things. I would like an evidentiary hearing so that we may put these uh, uh, documents into evidence and that this case can be properly lifted because the prosecution is committing crimes. So I ask that this court use the subpoena power and adhere to their oath of Article 6, Section 2 of the U.S. Constitution, as well as uh, Michigan Code of Judicial Conduct, Canon 2B. And the paperwork is clear. They refuse to respond. Everything that is happening now is criminal in violation of conspiracy, 18 U.S.C. 241, and in violations of Michigan, it's kind of in office, MCL 750.505. I have been humble with this court. I haven't been here just trying not to disrupt the court. I'm under threat, arrest, and coercion. You know what I'm saying? They have constantly, constantly been retaliated against the Detroit police as the sheriffs, as well as Ken Worthy's office. And it's well documented. They sent me to prison off the testimony of a perjured witness. And I would like all these things to be adjudicated properly in this matter. And jurisdiction has been challenged per federal and state case law. The people have to prove jurisdiction. They have statements. The corpus delecti rule bars statements as hearsay out of court. And this is what they want is they cannot make an affidavit for anyone. You see what I'm saying? My brother, as they claim, made these statements. I still haven't been given any discovery or anything. And they're in violation of the Michigan court uh, case laws, court of appeals case law and people versus Davey. This court clearly twice told me to give them discovery, 225 Michigan Appeal 502. And they're still violating the court's orders. And this court, honorable court, should exercise the contempt powers and have these uh, officers supposedly acting for the court, which are being criminal, to be put in jail until they comply and or fine. Detroit police has a history. They were uh, prosecuted by the Department of Justice in 2001, then they were under the consent decree into 2013. And they're still committing atrocious criminal behavior and acts against uh, natural persons, natural citizens. You know, Judge, you're familiar with this case law. You're a licensed attorney and uh, an elected or appointed judge. I don't know. 
But the Supreme Court under Marbury versus Madison rulings, they're decisive let the decision stand. This court is bound to adhere to Supreme Court rulings. These statutes in which they're charging me with are unconstitutional in violation of the civil rights cases, as well as Collins versus Virginia the Supreme Court. And today, again, I uh, respectfully compel this court to adhere to these things. And the, and the uh, Supreme Court says where a court does not have jurisdiction in act or where they don't uh, have jurisdiction to refuse to act, it's considered treason against the U.S. Constitution. Right? Wait a second, dude. I can, I'm not going to spend all day debunking all that other BS that you just spewed out, but you don't even know the treason clause of the Constitution. So how can you know everything else? Because only Congress can declare what is treasonous. And it is said in the Constitution that treason is giving aid and comfort to the enemy, you freaking idiot. And that's generally within times of war. So you got that wrong. You got everything else wrong as far as I can see. So why should we continue on with this? Well, because I want to laugh at this BS some more. And the paperwork is clear. All parties that I've served these papers on are in default, Your Honor. And I ask that this court, like on page um, 13 and 14, I clearly stated in the offer, I'm the offer, they're the offerees. And this process is approved by the Michigan Court of Appeals, Michigan Supreme Court, in which they cite federal court cases on the federal court cases, cite these cases as well. Um, so, give me a second, please. On page 13, it says, offerings one and two agree that all above and below statements are true, and they have until May 24, 2023 to admit or deny the above and agree that terms, a fair to hold state laws unconstitutional and void ab initio, agrees to give me in the sum of $5,000 uh, in gold and silver coins and or Federal Reserve notes and assets in their personal and official capacity. B, failure to dismiss charges with prejudice and grant all of the above, I mean, excuse me, all of the supra and infra agreed to give me 500,000 and agreed to be charged via MCL 750, 505, 18 USC 241, 18 USC 242 by the US attorney and the state's attorney for their crimes, the attorney associates King versus small parts in 59 federal Subsecond 674 at page 680 through 82, Eastern District of Michigan, 1999, where they have a legal and moral duty to speak and agree that if they offerees one and two try to impair this quasi contract, argue or try to litigate this case further, instead of dismissal with prejudice, agree to give me one million in their individual capacity via Holland versus Earl Graves Publishing Code 46. Federal Sub Second 681 at 685 through 687 Eastern District of Michigan. Then there's affidavit of truth. I, Carnell M. McQuarrie Eel, says that the above is true and correct and email these pleadings to offerings one and two, which is Kim Worthy, as well as this court on May 10th of 2023. And I signed it. You see, kiddies, this is exactly why you need a lawyer, because you're going to just make yourself look like a complete imbecile like this guy. I mean, he wants all that money because of crimes that he committed, and he thinks that he can get those statutes uh, removed because they're unconstitutional. That's for the courts to decide, not him. The law is clear, Judge. And this court must enforce the law is uh, written by the higher courts. This court is an, uh, an administrative uh, district court acting on a corporate level, and they cannot uh, they cannot uh, conflict. You know, basically issue their rulings in conflict with federal Supreme Court rulings, which they have taken an oath to do so. There, if they if this honorable court refused to do so, it would be treason against the U.S. Constitution. And I ask that this case be dismissed at this juncture because statements, I, I don't, I have, I have not been given, given anything by the prosecution and the people. And I would also ask that this court exercise the subpoena power and have Kim Worthy come here. She's not God. She's not a queen. She's not an empress or anything. She's an elected official. And her history precedes herself as committing crimes against citizens like Devontae Safford, Sigurds, uh, Daryl Sigurds. All these people that they're saying that they're trying to help get out of prison under the wrongful convictions on that. Valerie R. Newman was my former attorney 
And that also makes it a conflict of interest because Judge Kirsten Frank Kelly heard her on appeal. She let the judge do it. And I had to do almost 16 years in prison for a crime where there was no legal uh, jurisdiction at all. And there's documented evidence, paperwork, court seal, signature. And I'm being criminally retaliated against by the, uh, the people. There's no way they can wiggle anywhere out of this. And I would like these things to be adjudicated and uh, evidence. I would like an uh, evidentiary hearing so we can admit evidence and or suppress evidence. I haven't been given discovery. Uh, I didn't even know I had court the first time I came. I had to go online and look it up. Yeah, a likely story. I think what's more probable is that you received a notification in the mail and you just threw it out. Yes, how earlier they you said that they were banging on your door talking about this court case. So undoubtedly, uh, at some point, you knew about this case long before you uh, came here, before you looked on the Internet for it. So quit lying about this. These are the games that they're playing. And I would like their oaths of office, their vines, as well as, as, as other things. You know, because they're committing felonies, John. All due respect, I, I, like I said, I don't have anything personal against this court or anything. I just request that this court adhere to the supremacy clause of the U.S. Constitution and hold that these state statutes in which they have me charged with are constitutional based on the U.S. Supreme Court. And, uh, what is the case? The Shaney versus Winnebago Department of Social Services. There was a young child who uh, the mother relays that the father was beating the child and the child died. The mother uh, sued all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The U.S. Supreme Court held that no matter how bad or, or, or gruesome that this case was uh, uh, when it concerned the case, that the states have no duty to protect citizens from other citizens. Anything that compels performance, there has to be a contract. So anything that compels performance, there has to be a contract. So uh, if I have no contract with the fire department, then that means they're not any under any obligation to come and uh, uh, try to put my house fire out, right? Uh, well, that's funny because there was no contract with the fire department when my house burned down, but they still came over and uh, tried to put it out. I mean, at least they tried to put it out. It was mostly destroyed by the time uh, they got to it, but at least they tried. So once again, you are so full of bullshit. And again, I reserve my rights under UCC 1-308 and the common law UCC 1-103.6. And it's clear, Your Honor. And I ask that this court, you know, do their, their sworn, uh, 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 fulfill their sworn oath under the Michigan rules, uh, excuse me, the Michigan Judicial Code of Conduct. Uh, the court is not to be uh, swayed, I mean, swayed by public opinion uh, or what the people may think or whatever it may be. Like uh, the great honorable uh, Judge Dalton A. Rose. When he was in office many years ago, he did the right thing. They tried to get him to send these young juveniles to prison. He said, no, these young men can be uh, 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 rehabilitated. And he sent them to juvenile prison. At this time, the prosecutor then went and attacked this judge. You see what I'm saying? You have a right and a duty to fulfill your constitutional oath, Your Honor, regardless of what they think about you or whatever else. These constitutional, I mean, excuse me, these statutes in which they're charging me with are unconstitutional. I never uh, signed any agreements with the cities, counties, states, or whatever else to be governed by them. When you reside in a country or even visit the country, you have to abide by the laws of that country, whether it be the city, state, local, or whatever levels that each of those countries have, you still have to abide by those laws of that country. Otherwise, you will face the consequences. In fact, I dare you to go over to North Korea as a visitor and not bow before the statues of the Kim family and see what happens when you uh, do that. They'll either eject you from the country or they'll put you in prison. Because it is a law that anybody who visits the country of North Korea has to pay a visit to the statues of the Kim family and pay tribute to them and bow down before them. And if you don't, you're going to pay the price because it is their country. 
to adhere to their statutorily corporate statutes, which in Coins versus Virginia clearly states this is what the system is about, to create penitentiaries, to create prisons, hospitals, graveyards, street lights, so on and so forth, in which, in which today we live in this society. This society is clearly the matrix. The legal system is unconstitutional. Clearly, you have not read the Constitution, because if you would read Article 3, among other parts of the Constitution, it clearly lays down a outline for the judicial system in the United States. So, please, do your damn research. These are corporate enterprises. They act just as they act, uh, they are no different than any other corporate uh, enterprise when they provide services for the citizens. The case law clearly breaks it all down. I've never uh, 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 surrendered my sovereignty. Uh, Dred Scott versus Sanford clearly stated that blacks could not be citizens, were never intended to be citizens, and we were three fourths of human beings. But under the democracy, pardon? Three four, three fifths, okay, three fifths. Under the democracy, which is nothing but the mob rule of the old uh, South and European inhabitants of this country, if someone killed someone, stole something, they were all the mob who go out there and hang them and do whatever else. So every government is entitled to a Republican form of government, not a corporate. I'm not a corporation, right? I'm a natural person. The case law clearly breaks everything down, which everyone is in default, you know. So I just ask that this court dismiss this case at the juncture, this juncture. If the court does not, I demand under the Supreme, uh, uh, Supremacy Clause, the subpoena power of this court to have Kim Worthy brought in so we can have an evidentiary hearing before we go any further. Because how can a criminal prosecute or allege that I'm a criminal when they're committing all the crimes, Judge? I've been making, since I've been home, I've been making reports of police and other things, violations of law against me at the precinct. And no one listens to me. They just ignore me. But when uh, people call and say, well, hey, Mr. McCray did this, Mr. McCray did that, they come. Then it's found out nothing happened. You see what I'm saying? Like, they even borrowed me from the uh, Secretary of State because I was there trying to conduct business. Oh, well, we got a call that you threatened somebody. Oh, we found out you're free to go, but they just don't want you in here. That's not how this, this, this government works. Or the so-called democracy in which you guys call it, but it's supposed to be a Republican form. So. Okay, you have to respond. Thank you, Your Honor. We're here to hear because Ms. McCary, defendant, is charged with 10 felony counts. Uh, I've heard a lot of law quoted today. Yeah, um, everything from contract to treaty, corporate, but the only type of law that matters today is criminal law. Exactly, Mr. Prosecutor, and he's just been giving a long-winded speech about irrelevant topics for his case, which is criminal law. Not civil, corporate, or anything like that. It's just a way to muddy the waters. Now, that may work in the public forums like Kent Hovind always does. I mentioned him before because that's one thing he loves to do is to muddy the waters in uh, public debates. But this is a courtroom. This isn't a public forum. This is a judicial system where professional debaters play at. That will not work. And under our state constitution, this court has jurisdiction. Article 4, Section 15, the circuit court shall have original jurisdiction in the matters not prohibited by law, held jurisdiction from all inferior courts and tribunals except for otherwise provided by law, prior to issue here and determine prerogative remedial risk, supervisory and general control over inferior courts, and tribunals within the respective jurisdictions therefore the rules of the Supreme Court. And the jurisdiction of other cases and matters as provided by the rules of the Supreme Court. Boom. Roasted. Uh, there's uh, MCL 
section 7, 767.1, uh, several circuit courts of the state, the recorder's court, and any court of record having jurisdiction of criminal causes shall process and may exercise the same power and jurisdiction here, try and determine prosecutions upon information for crimes, misdemeanors, and offense. To issue writs and process and do all other acts therein as they possess and may exercise cases of prosecution upon indictment. Boom. Roasted. And the Michigan court rule, which are um, passed by the Supreme Court, rule 6.008, criminal jurisdiction section A. District court, the district court has jurisdiction over all misdemeanors and all felonies to the preliminary examination and until the entry of an order to bind the defendant over to the circuit court. These laws clearly state that this court has jurisdiction over these criminal matters. Boom. Roasted. Furthermore, as far as discovery goes, I personally sent Mr. McCrary twice um, the, um, the material, the discovery material. Uh, and I have the emails, copies of the emails to show it if that's necessary. Uh, so, in other words, you left a paper trail like you were supposed to. And that will come to bite the uh, defendant in the ass because he is an idiot. Dates are not on here. May 24th which was last week and May 5th. So we, we've sent him the discovery that we have twice now. What email? And I'll just ask what email, because it's not here. The, uh, the second email, I copied, paste and copied off the email that I received from his, with his documentation. Just here. So the people would ask that defendant's uh, motion be denied and this matter is set for preliminary examination um, where the people will, will have to show by probable cause that Mr. Rinsworth that a crime was committed in the jurisdiction of this court in Detroit, state of Michigan, County of Wayne, and that that crime and the probable cause was committed by Mr. McCrary. Thank you. Can I have a rebut? A rebut? Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Um, this, 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 uh, gentleman, what's your name again, sir? Sawaki. Miss Sawaki must be, in no disrespect to him or the court. No, 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 I'm not. No, what I'm saying is, based on his analogy, he's very delusional because the supremacy clause overrides state constitute, I mean, excuse me, state constitution as well as state laws of Marbury versus Madison, 5 U.S. 137 since 1803. Secondly, in uh, Shaney versus Winnebago Department of Social Services, the U.S. Supreme Court is clear in 489 U.S. Uh, 189, 1989, and the civil rights cases, um, uh, civil rights cases 109 U.S. Uh, 3 says the court held the 13th and 14th Amendment did not empower Congress to outlaw racial discrimination by private individuals, as well as the Shaney. They don't have a duty to protect citizens under the 13th and 14th Amendment. Um, give me one second. I'm trying to... Okay, uh, give me a second. Okay, on page 10, the court held the U.S. Supreme Court under the Supremacy Clause, which is he is bound because, Judge, if you rule against me today, you must hold him in contempt of court and also hold him in treason. The court held the legislative authority of the union 
must first make an act of crime or fix a punishment to it and declare the court that shall have jurisdiction of the offense. Certain implying powers must necessarily result to our courts of justice. But jurisdiction of crimes against the state is not amongst those powers, Judge. See Hudson versus Goodwin, 7 U.S. 32 at 3, uh, 33 and 34, 18, 12. This is still good law, Judge. He's arguing a state statute or a state constitution, which the state received this power from Congress. So how can you buck the system which gave you power to act as a corporate organization? Uh, Michigan became a state in 1829, which Congress gave them their power. The U.S. Supreme Court clearly says that, like they say, people of the state of Michigan versus me. You're saying I committed a crime against the state. The Constitution just clearly says that from the U.S. Supreme Court justices and the unanimous decision in which this court, as well as the prosecution under Article 6, Section 3, the executive department has sworn to uphold, as well as the lawyer's oath in the Michigan Bar Journal. Amongst other things, they're committed felonies in this court. Uh, cannot conspire or enter into conspiracy with these individuals to violate my constitutional rights, Judge. And the law is clear. Uh, one more thing, if I may. Um, my driver's license. Uh, and uh, page that, you 20. Have one? Pardon? You have a driver's license? Yes, ma'am. Oh. But let me, let me, I'm about to go here. And agree that at the onset of these unlawful attacks by the corporations and its criminal agents, that he did reserve his rights under UCC 1 308, MCO 440 1308, UCC 1 103.6, Siege offers driver's license. Dude, once again, you are a complete moron. The Uniform Commercial Code has nothing to do with criminal matters, and this is a criminal case. So you're once again going into irrelevant territory. And once again, I have to say that this is exactly why people like you need a damn lawyer to keep your asses on track because this is totally irrelevant to your situation as everything that you have argued. I reserve my rights on my driver's license, Judge, so the state knows this. I've never entered it because I was compelled to have a driver's license. And what I'm saying is they're committing treason. First issue, can I see the email? I just want to make sure that I... I, never, I, can, I can give you my phone. I've never got I anything. I have to show where I sent him the stuff, but I never got that back. No, oh, let's say I didn't see it. No. It's... It's Carnell, C A R N E L L M C C R E at gmail.com, which I wrote it down for me. Pardon? Can you spell the whole thing again? It's Carnell McCreary, M C C. It's my first and last name at gmail.com. C M C C R E A R Y. Okay. Um, also, there's a case I didn't bring with me today where concerning this type of document, he's trying to title this motion judge, what was a quasi contract, which was recognized by the Michigan Supreme Court. Can you think it's a quasi contract? Can you believe it's a motion? Is that the definition of quasi contract? Well, I mean, it's that's clear. the way it is. That's what it is. That's well, the federal law says that he cannot just see and hear the Supreme Court say that I'm the legislator of this contract. Okay. Yes. The litigation. Well, yeah, your contract. Yeah, this is in the Supreme Court. They have to obey the Supreme Court. Object. I object, Your Honor. There, there are some elements that people like to I haven't finished my oration. I don't know. I'll give you, you can just take a couple seconds. One of those emails, the E is Michigan. That's not my fault. They violate your order. Okay. Is the other one? One of them has it spelled correctly, one of them does not. So he wants you to receive one of them. Right. And neither one of them came back as bad. Okay. All right. So Mr. McCurry, I don't know why you're not receiving the discovery. You did not receive it. He didn't send can we uh can we subpoena Google and uh no, litigate this, this, this and is show that not, he has this is not a trial, this is not evidentiary hearing. Well, can I say one more After thing? After we get done today, we confirm your email address. Well, he did. It showed me that he got my paperwork. He admitted in the last receipt that he received my paperwork. Okay. So why would he send it 
Well, now why would I get it back? My email is is, is legit. It's my phone right here. Okay. Also, a jurisdictional challenge. Let's, before we get to that, Adrian, you want to respond before we forget? Yes, Your Honor. I do want to make a record. You know, this defendant has already availed himself to the jurisdiction of the courts of the state by admitting to having a driver's license. <laughs> That's right. He did admit to having a driver's license earlier. Therefore, he does not believe any of this jurisdiction BS to begin with, because if he did, he would have never gotten it to begin with. So he's not a true Moorish sovereign citizen because of that. He just plays one on TV. Also further add that the 10th Amendment has allotted and given police powers to the states, which then allows the state to create criminal laws under which this defendant uh, must avail himself to. Boom. Roasted. Yeah, there you go. Boom. Roasted. The damn 10th Amendment. Did you ever think about that one, you Moorish idiot? In all your research, in all your... Going back and forth and everything like that. You never bothered to read the whole Constitution. You are a complete idiot. I further add that, again, as the court has acknowledged, that this defendant has at least once received the discovery to his emails, uh, to his correct email. So any more allegations of not receiving discovery would be would be improper given that we have it at least proven that he could have it at least once. And there have been no additions or corrections since the discovery was done the first time. Boom. Roasted. Okay, May I respond? I'm going to wrap this up. You, have, you can respond. And yeah, just, just briefly if I may. Well, this young lady here to basically uh, respond to Mr. Sessions to respond to her statements in Michigan, they're locking people up for not having a driver's license. I was compelled. People but I reserve my rights. This was the law. As well. Pardon? People get locked up for murder as well. Well, I understand that, but what I'm saying is the corpus delecti, they're going off written statements. You know the corpus delecti rule on the Michigan Supreme Court case, as well as the federal court case. Where's the body of a crime? They're saying ammunition, all this, that. Where's the guns at? Where's the victim at? Strangulation? Where's all this? Where's the medical? Well, I wouldn't courts? know because we haven't and then, had an example. Okay, but no, jurisdiction, once it's challenged, it must be proven by the people. This is state and federal law the, from the Michigan court. So I'm demanding that jurisdiction. I mean, they're already in default, but still, again, I'm demanding jurisdiction be challenged, personal subject matter and territorial jurisdiction. Even when I was in prison, I had uh, interactions with Kim Worth, chief uh prosecuting office for the uh, state, and I reserve my right stand in prior proceedings, as well as uh, I was compelled to obtain a driver's license, and I reserve my rights. That's all the law mandates that I reserve my rights, which I have done. And right now, this lady, uh, Mrs. Um, uh, prosecutor, I can't remember her name, and Mrs. Sisson, a uh, Esquire Sisson, and this gentleman here, they're in conspiracy and violating federal and state law. There's been crimes. And I demand that their uh, oath of office, their law, uh, their license to practice law, amongst other things, be given to me, as well as their bond, as well as you, uh, uh, Judge Your Honor. Uh, also, like I say, jurisdiction has been challenged, and they have to prove it first based on the case law, which I have noted in, in this paperwork. They can't get around that. We can say, well, yeah, they're talking about reserving rights and all that. Okay, but still, the law from the state Supreme Court. Court of Appeals and federal jurisdictions clearly mandates that once jurisdiction is challenged, the person asserting jurisdiction has to prove it. And all they have is statements. Under the corpus delecti rule, out of court statements is not evidence, so these charges should be dismissed. Where is the body of the crime, Judge? Oh, we you went to law school, you were a practitioner. No, because I haven't heard testimony to know. Well, that's not how it works with jurisdictional no, charges. You know so, do you have any last? Well, I would like. Okay, I would like to challenge jurisdiction again, which I have done from the onset of this case. Personal subject matter and territorial jurisdiction, state and federal case law is clear, and with this court being uh, inferior to the higher courts, must adhere to their oath of office, um, their bond, and so on and so forth. Their license to practice law and the Michigan rules of uh, code of judicial conduct, and must. Uh, compel the people to prove jurisdiction. 
which they're asserting where's 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 proof you have to show this court that's at any stage of the proceeding the law allows that okay. so one discovery um i saw paperwork department the email address that you provided to the court is now the record um that discovery was set i'm not sure if it's an email please don't remember. If there's another email you would like to be sent to i will ask the prosecutor to do so two for requesting license numbers from everyone um my name is right here in front of you you can go over our p numbers are available for you to look up as they are for any general public okay as far as venue jurisdiction and you mentioned this you don't know whether i was appointed or elected i was both so i took the oath of the constitution of the united states and the constitution of this state to the best of my ability and with that, uh, I hear cases that were committed crimes that were allegedly committed in the city of Detroit. That is the venue for this court. I know that you disagree, but I am letting you know that's what I have to follow based off of the oath that I took. And the right to, to have exams is under Michigan Court Rule 6.10 that governs under exam, as well as MCL 7666.1. Talks about your statutory right, not constitutional right, your statutory right to have an exam. And under, let's see here, where should I go next? I'm not going to continue citing the rule of law, but under MCL 600.8317, I have the power to hear preliminary examination matters. MCL 766.1 gives me the jurisdiction and it states in three attorney general, 129 Mish App 128. Specifically, page 132, which is the 1983 case, and the district court has no authority to grant a motion for change of venue before a preliminary examination is held. The statute granting courts of record authority to change venue in criminal cases is only applicable to circuit courts in felony cases. We are at the district court level. We have not heard any testimony. I don't know anything about this case. So I am denying your request. I would call a motion regarding venue, plus jurisdiction, or any allegations at this point that people have been experienced or conspiring to commit crimes. I would like to hear the testimony from the allegations, from the information and the complaint. So I would like to set this for an exam date so that we can move forward and actually hear testimony so I can make a decision as to whether or not there's a probable cause that these crimes are existed. And, well, there you have it, folks. I'm just going to end it right there because that judge just wrapped it all up in a nice, neat little bow right there and presented this uh, more soft tart a gift of his own stupidity, considering that, yeah, this judge and these lawyers know a hell of a lot more about the law than he ever will. And that much is clear. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.